her assume everybody would have it like memorized for the rest of their lives. Um, this was, and today our real topic has to be with less than or greater than signs and absolute value. So go ahead and just try to find answers um, for these two. I wish that it was part of a time. So, what have you guys come up with? What was the idea? Two, two words? I'm going to go negative two. I'm going to go with negative two. Negative two does work here. Um, if I put it in, negative two minus four, um, absolute value equals six. That's the absolute value of negative six equals six. So negative two works. Oh, I do have one more thing. Let's try normal two over here. All right, so um, two, two correct solutions here. So what statements can we make about absolute value equations? Value equations have two solutions. All right, so keep that in mind and do number two. Has anybody found any answers for number two? Two people have. Very good. Find some answers on number two. So I know there's going to be two solutions. I can set up two problems to help me. Um, so my first problem will be positive, just like it looks. I'm going to say negative 2D is 14. So I took the bars out, and um, I can just solve this equation like it looks. But the, the problem is, what we forget, is that what's in here could possibly equal negative 14. And then the bars made it look positive. So my other possibility is the negative possibility that we can't see. We have to kind of think backwards to figure out. The negative possibility is that maybe negative 2 times z was a negative 14. And the bars turned it positive. So that's how you come up with these two solutions without just having to think like you can. You can set up two different equations, the positive and the negative. So this would tell us that possibly D could be negative 7, and this one would say possibly D is a positive 7. All right, so any equality to look similar, there will be two possibilities.
So, um, but you know, um, they said that I'm not going to put it for the money on the budget. Alright, so you can't go before the app. The Trilogy app doesn't give you this menu. I have figured out anyway. In the actual Schoology um, website, you'll see it here, Big Ideas Map. Okay? The other place, where's the other place you can find your apps in the Schoology website? Right here. Right there, you can also find Big Ideas Map. So when you go to free, that's the week you're in, you can click on here, they put in write down homework, but the problems are not posted here. You have to open the test book to find the right answer. So I don't know what yours looks like for me. Um, go here to the dynamic class. I'm so you have to go into the content and then type in what you're looking for. You don't have other options. I assign the algebra to you. Yeah. Okay. It's going to take a while to load right here, right now, so I might not write. Oh, here, content will help you. Or you could. Um, this takes you to a certain page. For instance, this one. Yes. I'll do it right now. I want to show you one other thing and then I'm going to start doing some homework. I still need to work. Um, all of these problems, number 3, 13, 23, this is a teacher teaching you. So if you're absent, open your book and watch these videos. Honestly, I think 3 is wrong. Not wrong. I think it's the wrong problem. Um, because this was just for the test last year. Because they gave us all new content. So look, this is a system of linear equations. There's no absolute value bar. But don't give up. This one's right. Okay. Don't give up. This one's right. So, um, you know, look for these little videos, and they will be a different teacher walking you through the steps. If you're absent, maybe you just you just call me. You know what I was talking about. Maybe I'll just like maybe have a few more lunches than that. Um, there's also like words out. Like this is live, like you can click on a problem like here and you can try it and it'll check your answer for you. Okay, so there's like some really cool study tools in here. So I'm just going to get into there and, and you guys look at it. And then I have a board here and I'll show you what words to look at. All right, so let's see if you guys are going to come first. You can type on the notes. I don't know if my parts may know where in the book to go. It's up to you if you want to write the whole heading. I am going to give you quite a bit to write today. So if you want to shorthand this, go right ahead. Go 
I've memorized everything. <laughs> Photogenic. <laughs> Photographic. <laughs> Can I open my eyes now? Let's do this. Okay. Actually, I already know the cat Okay. The equality, inequality means that whatever x is, when you add two to x, it has to be less than or equal to three. I just said that. Maybe not. Yes, no, 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 I don't want to do it. Let me explain it. I got it. Hmm. I say one. And then it's like three other numbers. Ava, how many times have you been saying that? Are you practicing for mom? Ava, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, negative one. When you add two to x, it's less than or equal to three. Make negative numbers positive. So, so limiting the amount of numbers. The greater difference. 
everything in between what looks like our lowest number is negative five and our highest number is one um but instead of that sentence we can show it on a number line All right, there's negative five, there's three. So I could do, um, I'm gonna do a, a solid dot at negative five, and I'm gonna show that it's everything in between negative five and one. So for absolute dot of inequality, one way to show the range of answers that'll make it true is on a number line. And the other way is with an interval notation system that we talked about with domain and range, and we talked about it one day. I can show this by saying um, it's everything between negative five and one. I'm going to require an algebra. So the number line version is kind of um, an algebra with some filters. In this location, it's um, required in H math and in C calculus. So I'm, I'm requiring both. The reason we brackets is because it's a closed box. And the reason we have closed dots is because of the equal to symbol. So sometimes we will do parentheses. All right, so um, it kind of took the whole class to come up with that whole interval, everything between negative 5 and 1. So I'll give you guys the process, and you don't have to write it now. I'm going to give you steps. But let me show you how to come up with those numbers if you just have, like, 30 people working together. Same thing as before, we're going to do the positive inequality we'll do x plus 2 is less than or equal to 3 so i just drop the brackets and i solved that and there's x is um numbers less than one okay What's negative six plus four? That's a negative four. So you add before you make positive. That's one reason. What's the absolute value of negative four? Negative four. Is that true? No. Thanks for asking that. Okay, so um, you take the problem, take the brackets away, and solve it. You do it again. But we have to flip the symbol and make the result negative. And I'm going to give you steps to write. So you don't have to write that. Um, or you can. I'll skip the steps. It's up to you. So I flipped the symbol and I made it negative. And now when I solve this, I get the other side. You'll get it. You don't have to take that same approach the next time. And you just flip and you write the same values. And so that's what you do if you don't have to add it. 
And the one we just did. We went right to step two. So for smaller problems, you can go straight here. You drop the absolute value bars, set up two different problems. You solve the given problem. And for your second problem, you flip the symbol and make the result negative. Okay. Yeah. Feel free. You want me to zoom or anything? Just let me know. Okay. This is how the book kind of explains it. I'm going to both show you guys um, structured examples and breaks down steps, you know, in their own way. So please read the book. When the symbol is less than, it's going to look a little different than when the symbol is greater than. So that's an example of what we looked at. Which is the easiest and most difficult for you to do? Not for you. Well, like for your ace one.
Are we supposed to drop the solution? Like it says. This, this by definition is always positive. So will this ever be true? Will this ever be less than negative one? No. Never. Alright, this doesn't match up. Distance is never negative. That's a contradiction. In graph terms, actually, you can put some distance there for contradiction. You can just call it no solution. So I want to show you right off the bat an example of how this is not helpful to forget. Can you skip out of the class? I love something I don't know. So here you guys go. Here are the two special solutions. Um, if your absolute value is less than a negative number, stop. Don't waste your time. No solution. Of course, if no solution is a possibility, then infinite solutions is also a possibility. If your absolute value is greater than a negative number, that's always true. Exactly. X could be negative a million or positive a million. It'll always be true. X could be anything. Well said. Just the one word. I'm not that slow. You're not that slow, just the slowest person in the room. Yeah, go right down. If you have, if you're starting to do that, I'm saying number six and six. I'm doing it. 
I haven't even solved it yet. Like, let me. Me. Sean, what's over there right now with it? Kind of ruining it. This is ruining the isolation. So step one is to to get rid of this. Cancel it. Cancel that thing from everything you like. Have you ever seen this little thing like randomly come in before? Yeah. Just here's my favorite. Let's try it for Sam. Is there any class you teach this year where this lets I walk in and get scared? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, she definitely knows how to do it. <laughs> Oh, was that where you check? Absolute value is always greater than a negative. This will always, I could put anything here, and it's always going to come out positive. So this is always going to be true. Boom. Like that's just just not boring. boring. Like that's not.
This symbol is flipped, and the five-thirds is now negative. Now, I didn't do any of that until I canceled the seven and the three in front. And this is multiplication, so I canceled it with division. Okay, so I have this class one. It's okay. I'm not scared of this lesson. One is the same as three over three. Get my common denominator. I know that's the same. So I have one half of two squared, and that means all of my numbers are equal to two thirds. You absolutely need less than your right side. <laughs> Only one is a 50 full time. You don't want to see it. Okay. No, you don't want to see it. The result, might, it might be two positives. Okay. So don't think that one's always positive and one's negative. Now, I'm going to show you how I graph fractions. Sometimes you don't have to graph them this way, but you can graph them this way. You have to draw a number line and do interval notation. All right, you don't have to do this, but I do like to show it. Sometimes it's nice to label your number line in fractions. One third, two thirds, three thirds, which of course is one. I just want to show this because, you know, it shows up like this in um, tests and in textbooks. So we might as well practice creating a fraction number line. I think when you practice it, it helps you understand it more. And this would be a big negative three. Right there's negative one. Right there's negative two, right? So greater than or equal to is a nice closed dot with my arrow going higher. And less than or equal to is the closed dot with my arrow going lower. I got a parenthesis for infinity. I got a bracket for eight thirds. I got a bracket for two thirds and a parenthesis for infinity. There's a lot of information in your book about these notations, about these brackets and parentheses. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. Right side. You know, they have to say, you're done. You're too done. It's 
It's nine problems. So you're sometimes 